Hey there, Greg with Boom Up Engineering, and uh, I'm kind of excited. I got a little bit more climbing gear here. Yeah, not rigging stuff, just more climbing. Um, got a new pair of spurs to take a look at. And that's some background. Um, I don't have a ton of experience climbing, it's just me and my two boys. We're learning and having a lot of fun here in Tennessee. And uh, here's what uh, here's what I'm using now is a pair of Klein steel spurs. Uh, before this, I was using the first pair I bought was Notch, the Notch Gecko steel, and they were they're maybe reasonable. Um, I just I just couldn't get along with them. I had problems with them fitting on my boots and staying in place. And I know a lot of the reason why, and it's just because of how they design those spurs. Uh, they're pretty flat uh, in the stirrup, and when you have flat, big wide flat uh, stirrups, they don't have a way to key on your boot. Like here, here's the clients. They got a nice, probably very old school shape to them. I kind of like that. I like I like old stuff. Um, but anyway, this is this was probably done so extremely done extremely curved like this is to fit the. The boots that they used to make, uh, you know, decades ago. I don't even have a good pair right now. You know, if I had my whites boots, uh, I think they're still in Montana with some of my belongings. But uh, you know, the old old boots didn't use steel shanks. You know, they used leather. And to use a leather shank, you have to build up a lot of thickness in the arch of the boot. Boot there. You know, this is this is a uh, Wesco. It's got a Vibram sole. There's a little bit of curvature, but not much. These are steel shape. These are not an old school boot in every regard. Uh, but, a, but a pair of whites or maybe even older boots, they, they had to build up this area with leather, real thick and stiff leather to build the shank of the boot. You know, get some structural, you know, some strength across the arch there and give the boot shape. Uh, but with steel, obviously, you don't have to do that. So it's, it's relatively flat. So anyway, I would, I'm assuming that these... These clines have been out so long, and, and uh, they probably haven't just haven't changed. And you know they got a nice curvature. Here. And you can look at these Buckingham. Oh, look at these Buckinghams in comparison. And I try to line these up the best I can. Try to get in line with the camera there. But you can see that the cline is 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 pretty narrow in the stirrup. And it's curved the whole way. It does kind of flatten out, but not not really, not completely. And it's very narrow side to side. So this is going to have your boot's going to slip down in this and be and not even be able to hardly rotate. But the uh, Buckingham, it it does kind of flatten out there, and it's a little bit wider than the Klein. It's not nearly so severe as the as the um, Notch Steel Geckos. And I wish I had them to compare, but I don't. I sold those. Um, but it, like I say, this would be a more, uh, I guess, very old school or traditional shape. And I don't, I don't know what the other Buckinghams, you know, steel Buckinghams and, uh, what is it, Bashlin and some of those other, I don't know. I don't exactly know how they are, uh, if they are, um, uh, have more of a curvature, you know, match more like the Kleins or not. So you can see... You can see this that the uh, the titanium spur here it fits fits re fits reasonably well. There's there's a little bit of slop in there, so we'll see how that how that treats me. It's not going to be it's not going to just lock onto the boot like the Kleins, but then on the uh, conversely, it's going to maybe support the boot better because this is a fairly flat arch uh, going across the boot, but it's it's also kind of narrow. Most of the time I'm using these thorough goods. Yeah, I guess they're about the same as the West Coast as far as width across the arch there. But even with this heel here, I was having a hard time, or it was impossible to keep the uh, Klein, excuse me, the, the notch steel geckos in place, even though I'd cinch them down hardcore and, and I just couldn't keep them from sliding. Gonna try these uh, Buckingham titaniums. Now, why did I buy those? Well, not tons of good reasons other than uh, it didn't cost much more than the aluminum spurs I was looking at. If I was gonna buy an alternative, I was thinking of the 
distill DMM aluminum climbers. Uh, I don't know all the differences between the, the DMM version and the, I don't know, it's the distill 2.0 or whatever it is, but um, seemed like maybe the, the, the DMM version might fit the boot better. I, I, I don't exactly know. It looked like it had maybe some more shape to it other than just a, you know, a little bit of an angle flat and then back and then up the shank here. So um, that's what I was going to try. Those seem to be reasonably priced. I can't remember, but you know, I think they're in the $400 range or maybe a little bit more, but these were about $380, $385, I think. Um, no pads on them, so I'm going to have to do something about pads. But I uh, figured, figured I'd maybe spend spend the same amount of money and then maybe put some of my own labor into these uh, Cadillac pads here. These Opsoles, they work okay, except they don't really fit my shin and my calf that great. So if I'm using them all day long, seems like I'll get a... Uh, sore uh, rubbed into my uh, cat uh, right up, right below my knee I could try lowering them down a little bit but then now they're getting into the bulge of my calf muscle so what I believe I'm going to try is uh, put some uh, hard labor and effort into these titaniums buy some sheet aluminum or sheet steel and I'm going to form my own uh, pads and then I'll buy some foam like this use some adhesive and mount the foam to the to whatever shell I make I could buy, I could spend a ton of money and buy distal or notch guards and, and I'm assuming the bolt pattern will line right up and if it didn't I would drill new holes but um, that's cost prohibitive and yeah, not as much fun so I think I think I'm going to try that but in the short run I can mount these up and, and give these a try and just if anybody's curious for my uh, upper straps these are the Kleins these are the inch and a quarter wide version. You know, these, these fit the opsil slot there. And you know, they fit into the spur, spur strap as well. So that's what I would buy. You know, they fit right in there. Look at the inch and a quarter, so you know, it spreads the load out a little bit more on your calf. You know, do I want big do I want the big uh, weaver and buckingham pads? I don't know. I don't I don't know if they're necessary or not. I would rather probably have form-fitted uh, shells, hard shells, that will lock this the spur on my calf so it's not going to move back and forth. And then, um, you know, it's going to be open, maybe not quite as big, as much surface area covered as the big weavers and uh, Buckingham pads, and so maybe I won't get quite as sweaty. I don't know. It's probably not a big deal either way. So. But that's that's what my plan is to get some of this foam rubber and adhesive and go to go to town to making my own. But I figured out oh, what the heck, you know, I didn't spend any more money. If I if I go that route, put a little labor into it, uh, should have, should be quite happy. Um, yeah, need to get some boot oil on these poor Wescos. I just uh, I had to rinse these off. It seems like anything in Tennessee. I don't have a lot of storage space right now, and if you leave. Especially leather and, and things that have, you know, especially if you had a little sweat on it or something, you know, it gets, it starts growing fuzz. And sure enough, it'll get a little, get a little fuzzy or moldy around the, the, uh, the bottom here. So, washed, rinsed her off good. Then I've got some Obanoffs uh, oil here. White's oil, boot oil is great. This Obanoffs is good. But yeah, yeah, any comments uh what other people what you guys are using yeah just give me a holler i'm always interested to see what other people are doing that's a big reason to uh, put some stuff on uh on youtube because uh, like i say i'm kind of on my own here learning and practicing having fun around the place trying to find the right spurs here so i can show you how much the weight difference is which i can't say it's a ton I'm sure those steel geckos are probably the lightest out of these three, but I don't have them here. Sold them for a couple hundred bucks, just about brand new. 808 grams. Eight oh eight versus uh nine seventy-eight. So that's about nine oh eight. 
180, about 180 grams. So I guess that is a fair bit. You know, you hold them in your hands and you don't notice it as much. I can't, but I think they're lighter, but looks like there's less steel. Looks like the, uh, They adjust about the same height, it's just that the, the, the titanium portion goes tall, higher than the, this forged portion of the uh, clines. There's more of this uh, tube, this uh, thin tube on the clines as, than there is on the uh, Buckingham. I believe these Buckinghams are pretty bulletproof. I, I was reading one one uh, account online, He said a guy said after 15 years he, he broke one. And it broke right across, just above the, the gaff. Um, and I didn't mention, the reason, I guess one of the biggest reason why I got another set of spurs is because now I've got pole gaffs and tree gaffs. You know, the, and the big reason, biggest reason is, uh, you know, pole, pole gaffs are great if you don't have thick bark, but what I learned, and I, I didn't really read online and kind of missed is that if you've got trees that aren't straight and maybe even specifically trees with bulges and whatnot it is hard to imp or impossible to get your spur in like if, if you got a big bulge in the tree right here and then the tree cuts back away from your your foot here and you're trying to get your spur in there but your your, your shanks hit and then you you try you gotta try to angle your leg and you know look all bow legged or whatever trying to get your spur in. So having the spur out the, the gaff out further is what I needed. So you can see some some pretty good difference there between the Buckingham and the, the Klein. Okay, let's put the put the short one first. Okay, so the Klein is mounted a lot lower for some reason. Buckingham's a lot higher, plus it's a lot longer. So if it's if it's got about the same angle and it's mounted higher but longer, the tip's going to be further out away from your foot, and that's what I need right there. I don't necessarily need a longer gaff to get through a bunch of bark. I just need to have the gaff further out away from my foot, so I can help stab it into the tree. So that's interesting. You know, if I put uh, if I put tree gaffs on the clines, you know. You know what they must do? They must have a steeper angle. They must have more angle kicking the gaff out. Or, or they just must angle out. They use this, you know, they're going to use the same mount location, but they're going to have to have the, the, the gaff coming out higher up on this, this uh, body of the gaff. So that's kind of interesting. You know, if you can get away with tree spikes, I was told, you know, get the tree spikes because they're it's easier to be stable and whatnot you know the, the, as the spike tip is closer to your foot the less leverage the tree you know the spike has on your leg and everything you know twisting on your knees and feet and everything you're going to be better off having as short a uh, gap as possible if you start putting putting the uh, bearing surface further out yeah that's that's a bigger lever arm torquing on your leg and hurt your knees and, and uh, make it unstable for your feet and everything, ankles. So, yeah, all makes sense. So, pretty cool. So, we'll, we'll try to get these kitted up. Like I say, build some pads for them if I can, if I think I can pull it off. If not, I'm not sure what I'll buy. I can run uh, these in the short run. I got two sets of these. Um, I need to get one of these. Uh, Probably the Klein set up for my boy. We're going to do do a takedown here, uh, not this weekend, but next. Big oak tree. And uh, so we're going to get some spurs on him. Um, I need to get some D-rings attached to his saddle. He's got a new tribe saddle. That's about the only thing I can find that will fit, fit the little guys. Uh, but it doesn't have any D-rings. And I need to get a lanyard attached or flip, flip line. So i got some work to do. Uh, you can see my... Uh, Kind of proud of that, my foot ascender there. Um, this has worked out really well. I haven't had any kickouts. I love. I, th I think the jet step's pretty great. I haven't, you know, haven't had any issues with it. And you don't have to lock it on your rope like uh, some others. Uh, 
Kiwi Climber I've had issues with. So uh, the only thing I can say about this is like when I was climbing the tree uh, a couple weekends ago and had up some bulges and it wasn't vertical and I was trying to get my spikes in. Sometimes you can get your your descender up against the tree, and I can't. It helps or it uh, makes it harder to get the spike in sometimes if like if you're trying to get around an obstruction. You know, if the tree's not straight or it's got bulges and things. Uh, it does add to the challenge. So sometimes I may want to take this off or just have a second set of uh, uh, spurs. So, I don't know what you guys say. Climber spurs. I, I like the sound of spurs better. Climbers doesn't sound very manly to me. So, anyway, yeah, that's worked out great. So, got any good comments? Yeah, just holler. Good questions. Let's see what you guys are using. I mean, I watch watch a lot of the popular climbers and maybe some of the non-popular. It's been a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, that's what I've got. Buckingham Titaniums. See what you guys think. Thanks for watching. Thank you.